I'm ready to try out this game, but one of the best solutions for lighting around a PC is Govi. And unfortunately, I've had trouble getting it properly connected to Home Assistant. So I'm gonna show you what I found today that allows me to turn on dream view modes just like that. First thing I wanna do every time we do a home assistant tutorial is tell you what I'm using. So here's the version of the core, the operating system, everything you might need. You might be on a different version and so things might change. Now I'm using a home assistant green for my setup. Your setup might be slightly different and I'm gonna explain some of those things as we go through this. So this is the GitHub page for the integration. Now, the gentleman who made this, Wes Furlong, great integration here. Can't thank him enough. There's a number of contributors as well. So this is just fantastic. This is the Govi to MQTT bridge for Home Assistant. And this is what we're gonna get installed. Now there's some reasons that I really love this one versus some of the other options. It kind of uses LAN first or so your internal network connections. Once you get your Govi gear set up in your home, lots of them have what's called the local LAN integration it's a setting on there you just turn that on and then it will be used first for a lot of the commands that will go through this integration and that means even if the internet goes out it's still going to work very important for you okay otherwise it does have modes and scenes and dream view and all those extra fancy features and it can use the new api as well so you're going to be able to pretty much get everything from Govi in here, at least everything I've had has come in. Anything connected to Wi-Fi has come in through this. You could eventually run into limits with API control, so uh, you might not want to hit those a million times, but uh, in general, this has been fantastic for me. There are three different methods for using this or getting it kind of set up. Now, I'm not using it in Docker. I have that Home Assistant green. So we're going to be using this guide, which I have a link down below in the description to. The overall steps are right here. We're gonna enable advanced mode on Home Assistant. We're gonna install an MQTT broker from the add-on store, enable that integration, add this specific repository to that, add on star, store and then we'll go through a quick installation configuration and just getting it started. So it's actually not that hard. All the instructions are here, but I'm gonna give you some extra little things as we go. So I'm on my PC and that's how I'm accessing Home Assistant. You can see I'm on homeassistant.local colon 8123. That's the basic URL unless you've changed that. That's where you're gonna head log in with your credentials. Now I've clicked on my profile down at the bottom left, and now I'm going to scroll down to advanced mode. You have to make sure that advanced mode is turned on for your hub, so turn that on. Then we're gonna head into settings, and we're gonna look for a new add-on. So down here at the bottom, I'm gonna tap on add-on store, and I'm gonna search for MQTT. Now. There's the one that I'm going to use. It's an official add-on. It's the open source version of this. And I'm gonna hit install. Now it's installed, I would suggest that you want to start on boot and you may wanna restart the add-on if it does crash. Auto update, that's up to you. I like to manage my updates a little bit. But once you're ready, you know, you don't even have to wait for anything else or look through all that, just hit start so that it gets started. You can see that it's using some of your CPU to get started here, and you can look in the log, see if there's any kinds of issues. Now, I ended up rebooting my whole home assistant. So I just went to settings and I went into the system and up here in the top right, click that, I rebooted the whole thing. That was just so that when I went into settings, devices and services, and I hit this MQTT add, 
that it was going to work here for me. So I was having some issues getting that started. That might help you out. So now that we've got that running, I've headed back into settings. I'm going into add-ons and we're going to add the Govi to MQTT one. Now I've done this once before, so it's going to show up a little easier for me. But what you're going to want to do is go up here and hit repositories. Now you're going to want to paste that in and then you hit add, okay? So this is how we're adding that specific repository on GitHub. Uh, you can see mine's already here. I could delete it if I wanted to. Now that I've done that, I can search for Govi and then I can hit that and hit the install button and we're good to go. Now you're gonna need uh, a couple of things and this is where you might have about a half day delay so uh, right here i've gone into the configuration so we were on the info page i haven't started this uh, this add-on yet i'm going into configuration i'm going to hit the show unused uh, optional configuration options you have to fill out the three top ones. So your Govi account email, your Govi account password, and your Govi API key. So inside of the Govi app is how you're going to request an API. In order to do that inside of Govi's app, I'm actually just in the profile side of things, and then I'm gonna hit the gear icon up in the top right. You see right there, it says apply for API key. Now, as you click that, you're gonna put your name in, your reason for the application. So uh, you could say something to the effect of, I'm trying to use it with Home Assistant, but I would just say something like, I'm looking at developing an application for Home Assistant or something to that effect, okay? That's just me telling you how uh, sometimes you gotta do these things. You have to look at the Govi Developer API Terms of Service, because yeah, you are using a service here. After a day or so, you will get back an email that uh, Govi actually sends to the one you use there where you could just put in your API key. So you just copy that in, paste it in to that box and you're good to go. Okay, so I've put in those pieces of info into these, uh, into the settings here and I've just scrolled down to the bottom and I'm gonna hit save. Now I'm able to start this and this is the exciting moment. If everything starts up right here, you're in a pretty good spot. I'm gonna go into the log and, and kind of watch this. Now you're obviously Go, not going to see all the information from my system here, but as I watch this, there's actually a lot of information. You can kind of see it go through and discover all your different devices and uh, you, you'll get a feel for what's being discovered. Then we're gonna head to one more spot where we can start to kind of configure things, adjust things, and then I'll show you how it now all works. Now that we have the integration done and working, there is a short conversation to have about Matter and Govi. Now, a lot of the products that are coming out today are gonna have the local API, and I think it's just as good to use that as it is to use Matter today, because in a lot of cases, through this integration method, you're gonna do most of the control locally, and then if you need to send commands to the cloud for any reason, you're gonna be able to do that through that integration. So I don't really see a reason to be putting a lot of devices into Matter unless they are cloud only. And in that case, you'll want to then add your device through Matter, do most of the basic control using that Matter connection. And then otherwise, for some of the effects, you'll want to use this new integration. So that's just the little detail that I've, I've found with Matter today. Otherwise, you should be pretty good to just use this and the direct connection method through Govi. Now that we've done all of that, we've given it a little bit of time, just a couple of minutes, now I can see that I have 27 devices within the MQTT integration. I can click on MQTT, I can go to the devices, I can see all the different entities. We can click in here and now you're seeing 
all my different Govi lights have been integrated here. Any of the dream view scenes that I have created also have their own device. Then I have entities and I can filter for uh, specific integrations. So I'm going to specify MQTT here. And this is where, you know, you're getting a lot of entities that do a lot of different things. So for example, yeah, here's the AI gaming sync box. I have this on my PC here. I have a toggle for its dream view. I have gradient, I have power switch. I, ha I can request the API state, okay? Maybe not a big deal, but I have different segments even that I can individually control. And of course I have a status. There's a basic light too that I can go into and you can see all the effects are here, including uh, some of the ones that like I've created, my DIY ones. So there's just a ton of options here for basic control within the, the, the basic device, but then I have other entities that I can use. So in the past, you know, I had a pretty complex automation using Govi's app, a, a number of other things to kind of make my desk strip, I have, a, I have a LED strip here on the desk and that sink box and another uh, set of lights called the cube wall sconces. I had all of those and I had this really complex method of getting DreamView turned on. I'm able to take all of these different components of the automation and delete them all because of this integration. So it's making my uh, automations with Govi really simple. So I'm just gonna do an add action. We're gonna choose our device. And now you can see I have all these different options. I, I can toggle all the different segments. I can change even brightness in the different segments. Look, it just goes on forever. So if I'd like now, I'm just gonna turn on my gaming sync box. This is a toggle for dream view when I press that button. I'm gonna hit save. And now it just turned on dream view on my computer like that. And because it's a dream view, it just turned on three lights. So I actually only sent one command to Govi's API. Now that we have the overall system working, we have all our new devices, there's obviously a number of things we can do. So number one, you can create little automations and there's a lot of options now for automations. Not everything works perfect. I'll say I sat here, I played with a few things for a while and I've kind of come to this in, in terms of how it works for an automation or it works really well. So my, my keyboard, it, it has buttons on it. So when keyboard button one changes from any state, basically when I press keyboard button one, and if the power switch is off, so if the gaming sync box is off, that's from Govi, then what I'm gonna do, I have this disabled because I didn't need it, but I'm just gonna turn on, and this is the device, I'm just gonna turn on that DreamView toggle. Now it looks like you could toggle it right here, just like on off, on off. Unfortunately, that's, that's not gonna work for you. So I'm turning on the DreamView, that's turning on DreamView mode that I have set up with this device. Now I have a reverse automation. So when I press that button and the gaming sync box is on, so in most cases that's gonna be on DreamView, then I'm gonna turn off DreamView and I'm also turning off the light. You could add a delay in there if you're having trouble with any specific lights. I've created a toggle here so I can hit my little button and you saw it triggered that, but it turned on. If I wanna turn that off, there I go. It's now turned off my whole system. And just because the gaming sync box might stay on, that's where I'm turning it off with an entity. From that entity standpoint, this is really great. So I'm gonna choose the light, I'm gonna choose to turn it on, and I'm gonna choose that gaming sync box. One of the great things that you can do here is, first of all, you can transition, color, all those things if you just wanna do those things. But right here, I can type in any effect that I find in the Govi 
application. So one of them is Dreamlike, and I just type that in, and it will turn on the Dreamlike effect for me. So that's another action that you can take. Another option you have is to control things with a dashboard. Now, obviously dashboards in Home Assistant are very powerful. I'm not gonna show you all the different kinds of dashboards that you have, but let me show you a couple of controls here that you can build very quickly. Of course, from the dashboard standpoint, you're getting a lot of different options for controls. Over on this side of things, I have the ability to go in, choose my effect for my, uh, my gaming sync box. That's what I've been using here. You can see the effects going off. Obviously, I can change uh, the brightness. I could toggle it on or off. I can just choose single colors all of those different things. And you're seeing the status reflect fairly quickly on the page. So I just clicked that off and now you can see all these different things have turned off. Now this is my, just my dream view toggle, okay? And you can see that I can turn that on or off and now the dream view is about to come on and all the different lights associated with dream view have now come on. I could turn that back off and it's gonna turn those other lights off. See this big one right here? Here it comes, that's it. Now I can also uh, turn on and off the dream view component. So I just turned off dream view for the whole system, but I didn't actually turn off the gaming sync box so it can run effects you can uh, choose those effects in your automations or on your dashboard and you can see it running back there but if you want the whole dream view thing i got a little toggle right here i have this third section over on the right where i can turn on and off the power switch this one's very quick um, and i can also turn on dream view just like that so Saw me turn that on, it's turning on all my lights again for dream view. I also just have a basic status that I can have a look at there. So you're seeing how uh, many different controls there are. There's a lot of different options and depending on the device you have, uh, you're gonna have even more. So I'll give you another example. So my smart kettle from Govi actually has a number of different modes. The one I mostly leave it in is uh, coffee mode. But you can see how I can put it into its DIY mode, which is a mode you can set. And then you just have the plain old power switch. So there I have that. I could just turn it on. I can change the modes as I would like. Really nice control actually of my smart kettle from Govi. So it's more than lights. This integration really does a lot of great things. I'm still trying to beat this level, but I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial here between Govi and Home Assistant. Hopefully you've got that working in your own home. Otherwise, you can check out other tutorials for us for building your smart home right over there. Thanks for watching today, and of course, live smart.